All right, for this build, it's gonna be the first time I decide to do an in-flight aircraft, which shouldn't be too, too hard. But this is the Edward Tempest Series 2, and the landing gear doors pretty much fit in place. There's a couple gaps I'll have to fill in, but with a little bit of sanding, you can get them to sit flush and pretty nice. The only issue is when Edward released this kit, there's nothing for the spinner. So behind the propeller assembly, it's just this big gap. So I'm going to have to fabricate something to go in here that mounts the motor and I can run wiring through. So it'll have to be sturdy because it's a big empty area in there and the chances are I could knock it back by accident or do some damage to it. Another issue is that I don't really have an idea yet for how I'm going to run the wiring for this. My first thought was to come down through the wing into a drop tank because there is a little bit of a space here in the wing. There's enough room to do that. The only problem is the drop tank is too small to run a battery in. So a, see through the side here, there's quite a bit of room. The only thing I was thinking is depending on how good the fit is, it might be possible that I don't glue the wings at the wing root, and if I need to change the battery or turn it on, I simply remove the wing and put it on like this, because it seems to fit pretty well. The only problem is there's a seam line here. And right now, that seems like it might be the easiest way to go, depending on what sticks out underneath the engine cowling here. So that'll be the challenge. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this in flight, it's actually going to be a tribute to the Tempest's role in the diver operations, which was chasing down buzz bombs, also known as the V-1 rocket or as doodlebugs, which was the world's first guided missile. So I'm going to have to do some head scratching to figure this one out. The build is pretty straightforward for the Edward kit. The Tamiya doodlebug is Tamiya. It'll go together pretty well and fast. So my next step before I do anything and while the wings are loose is to fill in this gear bay to put the panels in there and just to do some dry fitting to see how this all goes together to see if maybe putting the motor and the battery and everything up in here may work. We'll see how that goes. I know Flying S models did the drop tank approach and it was very clean. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna have a piece of clear rod going up supporting both of these airframes. So I don't want wiring just to be hanging willy nilly out the side. So we'll see how that goes. One thing with the Edward kit is that it's not designed to have closed landing gear doors. However, the tail gear door fits really nice just by clipping the tabs off. So it'll drop right into place but the main landing gear doors do need a little bit of work. I had to sand about a millimeter off the front part of the doors just to get them to sit properly. And then after that, I had to come in with some epoxy from Tamiya, the two part stuff, just to fill in some of the gaps. And then afterwards, smooth it all flush and basically put the lines back on with some scribing. Because these gaps were quite large, two-part epoxy putty was the best way to fill them. And then when it dries, it's actually quite a decent bond. So that gap there, there's less chance of that getting pushed in or the gear door having any flop because of the butt joint in the front. And afterwards, with the innards of the landing gear bays put together, it secures it quite nicely. So one of the issues with this kit is that the leading edge isn't square. So what happens is when you try to place it on the lower half of the wing, you don't get a nice join. It tries to roll forward. So what I ended up doing to correct that is just sand this to square everything up a bit more. Barely take when you're building this Tempest from Edward, the gear bays are a little complex, but they go together quite nicely. And with just a little bit of sanding, everything went together almost like Lego. The reason that I'm still putting together the beard, oh, the beer, <laughs> that's on my mind. The reason I'm putting the gear bay doors together 
is that it's going to add some strength to the wing because if I just chose to not build any of that internal structure, it would flop, bend in on itself, and it just wouldn't be able to sit. Thanks, dog. Wouldn't be able to sit nicely. Another thing that came up with fitting the wings is that the locating tabs kept everything misaligned and off-center, and I ended up cutting them all off and just letting everything sit with butt joints just to make sure the leading edge was flush and the trailing edge was flush as well. So now that I've used the epoxy to fill in the little imperfections and it's hardened, I want to sand down the bottom of the part of the wings so they're nice and flush and the door fits a little bit better. So on this side here, it's already been filled in and then sanded, and then I rescribed the lines just to clean it up and make it look like it's a proper molded part. Over here, you can see where the epoxy's come through, and I've left it as a bit of a bump so it sits over the edge, so as I sand it, it'll level out. I'm not too worried if I lose some detail because I can always come back in with a scribe tool and my rivet wheel to clean that all up. And again, this kit was never designed for this, so this isn't a fault of Edwards. This is just my me pushing the kit to a little bit more than it was intended to be. But so far, I mean, that went together quite, quite well, just a little bit of cleanup, and it looks like it should have been like that, in my not-so-humble opinion. And if you've built an airfix kit, this is still less filling and sanding than you'd have to do. Now that that's all sanded out, I hit it with, followed up with a 12th, what is it, 2000 grit sponge from Tamiya just to smooth out any little etching that might have been done by the 800 grit. Then I'm going to tape off the panel lines again for the gear doors and just come in with a razor saw and just let it sit there and gently pull it. Just to rescribe the lines. I don't want to go too far or else I'm going to end up knocking that panel loose. So there we go. I initially filled in this gap on the trailing edges of the wing with some Tamiya white putty, but the problem was it shrunk after a couple nights and was very noticeable and the seam was back. So this ended up being a great opportunity to try some sprue goo for the first time. And all sprue goo is is some sprue and some Tamiya extra thin cement. And what happens is it melts down the sprue and it gives you a liquid concoction to work with that when you apply it in a gap, it melts into the styrene around it, unlike putties or super glues that just dry on top. And another benefit as well is when it dries, it's very easy to scribe and add detail back afterwards, which was great because the wing was offset just slightly on the trailing edge and I had to run new rivets anyways. Once that sprue goo's been allowed to dry overnight or a few hours, it's just as easy as sanding styrene. It's nice and hard, and I don't have to worry about it flaking away or shrinking. With all the sanding and rescribing complete, it's time to check my work with some black paint, and this will show up any imperfections or lines that are still showing through. I used some brass rod to replace the gun barrels for the 20mm cannons just because they're a little finer detail than what the kit had. Since this aircraft was going to be in flight, one of the things I needed was a pilot. I didn't want to spend money on a resin pilot and having to wait and holding up the build, so I ended up plucking the one out of my Spitfire Mark I kit from Tamiya. It's a very nice figure, it's going to do its job, but the only problem is it's a Spitfire pilot going into a Tempest, and the Tempest has a much larger cockpit, so I had to cut the bottom out of the seat and clip the tops of the rudder pedals and re-glue them onto the pilot's feet just so it looked like he was more, more of a natural fit in there. So it was a little bit of work. The rudder pedals were finicky to cut and get back into place, but it ended up coming together in the end. Once I was happy with the dry fit, the pilot came back out and I glued all the pieces securely. There's not much footage of this because the cockpit goes together quite well. There was just the one broken pipe on one of the sidewalls, but that's very common with this kit. And I just simply tacked it back together with some glue.
So one of the things I like to do before getting into paint is getting as many sub assemblies done as possible. That way you have to set up the brush the one time and use common colors. Just speeds up the whole process. Whoops. So what I'm gonna do is trim out this crossbar now. I think that's just to support this piece because the sides are pretty thin in the casting. And then I'm gonna glue in this. And at that point, I think I will be ready for paint. So what I'll do then is once that's all together and all the sub assemblies are together, that'll make a nice point to end episode one of the basic assembly of the Tempest. Or I might add in some wiring, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how this looks and how I'm feeling because there's a lot of wiring and stuff that should go in the sidewalls that's not there. But also having a pilot in there, mm, I don't know if it's really a big, big deal. So we'll see how I feel. We'll get this. So I'm use my nice Tamiya nippers. And Clip it right here and clip here. So that's going to conclude the end of part one. I find it's going to be easier if we move into paint for a separate episode because then you can see how I'm setting the tools up, stuff like that. At uh, the end of this episode, the wings are pretty much done, ready for paint. The cockpit step assemblies are all together and really the pilot's fitted in place and it's a good place just to stop. It's The assembly stage is done. The next major hurdles are going to be getting the motor set up for the engine and how that's going to look. So that's probably going to require some 3D printing and some ingenuity, but we'll get to that when we do. That's going to conclude this episode of The Model Guy. I hope you're enjoying the extended format and you come back for the next one. And a big thank you to all the patrons who are supporting this channel and are getting the videos early and all the fun behind the scenes stuff. I'll see you next time.